Hi guys, welcome back to the Talking Rangers YouTube channel for another video. I'm delighted to be joined by QPR legend Mark Bircham to dissect all things QPR of late. Um, and finally, we're back to winning ways. But before we get back to you know a, a natural, enjoyable chat, uh, talk about last night's victory, I just want to come back to sort of the games prior to that um, and talk about QPR's worst good luck charm, bad luck charm, um, <laughs> and sort of what you thought of some of those games uh, coming into the build-up to last night. So, yeah, you, you got to a lot of those games. You had the Barnsley, Millwall, two horrendous performances. I think you were there for both, weren't you, Mark? Yeah, Peterborough away in the cup. I was oh, there. Peterborough as well. Right, um, talk to me about those because what was your sort of thoughts about those sort of games? Don't need to go into those individually, but what was sort of your overriding thoughts as to where it was going wrong for QPR? It was maybe we looked a little bit tired, but but before that, when we was on our good run, we weren't playing magnificently well and dominating teams. Forget the red and one because they looked a completely yeah. out of sorts. But before that, we was winning games that we probably shouldn't. And we've probably a lot higher up in the league than we, we should have been. So we was getting away with it. So we was it was always in the back of the mind where we could hit a rough patch. But yeah, in the, in then games it was just it was just a lack of attacks. I think it was we weren't we weren't getting dominated in games. It was just a lack of attacks. I think Clark, I think we had a shot outside the box at Peterborough. Uh, there was Ilias's free kick at the crossbar. I think a white ball was it. was only Lyndon's last minute header, which was from six yards out. I think that was the only chance I can really remember up there. Mill as well. I think we had a couple of corners. So it was the, the more worrying thing was the lack of chances or the lack of goal scoring chances. I think mm. if you put Charlie and Lyndon's all their minutes together, I think they might have only had two shots in the whole of their games all put yeah. together. So that was a little bit worrying. Uh, the Middlesbrough game, I thought Middlesbrough should have been 3 0 up after 20 minutes. I thought they was a much yeah. better team. And now we come away with a draw, it was unbelievable. And then it goes to last night where we probably got a win when we didn't deserve it, really. We was just hanging on realistically for a draw at best once once they got it because was Josh Bowen one of our old players that we oh, sold them no. I took I sacrificed myself took myself out of the stadium and then we, we got the win right so this whole point of our unlucky jump has been proven last night so what yeah, was it I list, could, list me off the lied. games that you went to yeah I could have lied about it and said yeah see look I'm not unlucky but yeah I took myself out when they what, what yeah, minute I did think, you leave last night I think it was a couple of minutes after the equaliser. I thought that's enough. I did. I've, I've bought it on the team myself, and I started thinking I was bad luck myself. And literally, as I got out of the stadium, you could hear the cheer that we scored. So yeah, you're welcome, QPR fans. I sacrificed myself for you. Oh, so 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 very kind of you. Do you want to touch upon, um, as you mentioned, our sort of attacking players not creating enough chances, and even maybe a couple we have had, we haven't seen that sort of lethal. Um, sort of clinical element that we maybe saw prior into the season. Do you think that's um, down to maybe a lack of personnel? Do you think that's down to players out of form? Do you think, do you think, or it's the way we're sort of lining up? Even last night we saw a transition playing a false nine. What do you kind of think that is? Do you think that's just simply just a, a, a blip as a whole of the team and you kind of, that's a casualty of a, a team playing poorly, you create a lack of chances? Or do you think there's more to it than that? Yes and no. More uh, than that, and sorry. You so sometimes you get you do get the dip of where you get all the fixtures at the festive period, and you get mm. through that and you do well. And you sometimes get a dip where the, a bit of the February blues, where it's not near enough at the end of the season where you can get excited. So I don't know. And the, and the games are coming thick and fast. Maybe a, a bit of fatigue, a bit of mental fatigue. Yeah. And look, we we try to freshen it up a little bit by bringing some players in. I, I would have. Maybe like to have seen another centre forward selfishly as a, a fan, uh, yeah, but well, we didn't. Uh, and a, a false nine, I'm not a fan of the false nine. I do like at least one centre forward on the pitch <laughs> if we can, especially as we especially as we got three, we might as well play one. But yeah, yeah. but look, fortunately it worked out last night, and for um, I'm happy for for Mark because if it if it didn't, he might have got uh, some. The disgruntled fans asking why they weren't the centre forward at home against Blackpool, but it worked out luckily. So now we can focus on the next one. 
Right, you segued onto it nicely. Let's kind of dissect last night a little bit. Obviously, Warburton thinking that he's got the tactical prowess and the squad as the likes of Manchester City, not naming a centre forward, going with the false nine, Chris Willock. How did it sort of look from the offset? Obviously, Willock came off just on the brink of the second half with obviously the red card. But what was your thoughts of how that was implemented and executed in the first half? No, it's a bit hard when, like, when you're trying to second guess a team because you don't know what's going on in the week. You don't know if Charlie's got a little bit of a knock or Andre's got a bit of a knock. So, but uh, yeah, to start with no not uh, no centre forward at home against Blackpool was strange. I, don't, I didn't think it was working first half, even really before the sending off because yeah, I think you look at our two chances. Well, our goal was off a corner, and our only other chance was off a wide free kick. So in open play, we weren't really creating enough. And then we had this uh, stupid sending off of Sanderson, which he was looking really good before he decided to... Yeah, this is what I said last shake, time. I thought he was shake hands yeah. with the player's head with his forehead. <laughs> so, yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, and then that put us on the back foot and we just tried to hang on in there. Uh, but it, look, it worked. I think it was the relief. You could see the relief of everyone, all the players, all the staff, because you didn't want to go another game without a win. But the, the best thing about it, we've, we've not played well. We've hit a, a bad streak of results and we were still full third. So that, that, that gives you some great optimism for the rest of the season. Do you think we played our best football yet? Like you mentioned, um, you know, there's been so many points this season where we haven't played our best, but you've ground out results. Do you think there's still more to come? And do you think we will see that this season? Or do you think it will just simply be now this the business, business end of the season, like last night, grinding out results and just trying to get the points on the board? Or do you think we will maybe see these glimpses of um, that sort of progressive style of play and, and sort of showing the quality we have seen? Or do you think that's maybe something we won't see now? What's your sort of take on that? Well, I, I, we haven't seen that dominating of possession yeah. of like, attacking play for, for a long while. Like I said before, we mm. were sort of, nicking results in the last yeah. 10 minutes where we might have been the better team it might winning and losing there weren't much difference in our performance but i i do think if we we're going to make a push for the playoffs or try and go up we're going to have to improve our performances like the results will probably take if we keep if we keep trying to grind out results then it can go either way i think if we, we try and dominate our possession again and trying to get more attacking football then you got a, you got a better advantage to try and win games. I think, and if we if we do want to go up, our performances are going to have to improve. Definitely, definitely. Who's got to be the standout individuals? Um, sort of late. I think for me personally, I think Jimmy Dunn's been fantastic getting a goal last night. What have you sort of thought about Jimmy Dunn of late? Do you think he's our best centre half? Yeah, no, excellent. Yeah, excellent. I've, he's probably out the the back three that have been playing he's been the most consistent he's got a bit of everything bit of aggression got a bit of pace for a big man and I just like his front foot defending I think he's been, he's been as you said he's probably been one of our better players yeah granted um, and what did you of course um, last night that winner I mean you didn't see it yourself have you watched the highlights back or <laughs> yeah I've watched the highlights it went down I was looking on the Twitter feed. I think it went down as Ilya scored one, then it was down as an own goal, and then Luke Amos has claimed it. I don't know how much of a, a touch he got on it, but it's his birthday, so we let him have that. Yeah, we we'll let him have it. Uh, George Thomas, I mean, like I said, I'm not sure how much you saw of it, but he's, he seemed very lively when he came off the bench. Uh, someone that's only really seen, we've seen in glimpses at points this season. But I'd like to say maybe the last couple, maybe the last month or so, I think he's offered a bit more coming off the bench. He's had a lot of energy. I do like his worth ethic. We've maybe not seen the quality we'd liked, but I think last night we've seen a bit more from that. How much will that do for him? And what do you think we can see from George Thomas, or if anything, come the end of the season now? All you can do is try and take your opportunities when you get the chance, when you're out the team, like Luke Amos might have done last night, like George would have done. But uh, I just think all in all, in an all-round play, I think what's probably let us down recently was deliveries from our full-backs, our, our wing-backs. And that, I think, in the games that I've watched them recently, we haven't really seen that. You see Moses do it against uh, Hull, put a good ball in, nearly a scored. And the, the, the centre four is at, uh, Linden's like and knowing Charlie so well that he scores goals off crosses and I don't think we get enough crosses in the box I think mm -hmm. we we turn crossing opportunities down and we we go and we recycle the ball around the box where we need to start getting more deliveries in the box for the centre forwards that we have mm. and that's quite actually a good point because I think 
I've talked about it prior in the season, how much reliance the wing-backs are in this formation to creating chances. I think it's a very fair point, fair point because I think Adoma had a bit of a blip. I think, like all players did, those sort of that Barnsley and Millwall, I think all players were pretty dire. But I think Adoma, really, his performance drops quite significantly. And especially when we're chasing games in the second half, going towards that loft end, Adoma is so instrumental to creating chances. And I think... And, and as well, Moza Jabajo, he kind of hit a poor on a form. But I think, like he's mentioned, those when those two are playing well, we got we're causing fret down both sides and getting cross into the box. That's when we're scoring goals. But at the same time, it's a problem because you put bo- cross into the box last night. You've only got Willock and Chair in there. Right, Zoom decided didn't work. Was just picking this back up. Um, just coming on to strikers there. You know, Mark Warburton's had three strikers throughout this season. They opted not. You know, they couldn't find another number nine as Ferdinand came out this week and said they were looking, but Mark actually wanted to bring in another number 10. Of the three, if all fit and well, who would you go for and who would you start at the top of that side? It, it all depends. Like, Lyndon does really well as a, a number nine, as in battling, challenging and running in behind. It reminds me of a bit of a Rob Steiner when he plays. Uh, uh, Charlie... Look, you know Charlie's going to get goals if he's got minutes on the pitch. But I think it don't matter who you play, we've got to play to their strengths. Andre Gray, we've not seen a good run of games from him. Uh, we Hopefully, we want him to kick off after that derby goal, but it's not really happened. He's yeah, scored a good goal at, away. Was that Coventry or Birmingham? He's scored a, a good goal Derby's away. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, so, look, they've, they've all stuck and started, ready to go on a goal-scoring streak, but they haven't. And... As I said, for us to for us to go up, we need one of them to hit form. But I think it's more important in playing to their strengths. If you if you've got Charlie or Lyndon in the scene, you have to get deliveries in the box. Charlie, you look at the history of him, but he scores goals from crosses. So we need to get crosses in the box, and I think that's what's let us down with the wing backs in recent games when we haven't been scoring or haven't been creating chances. With with Andre, he's a bit different. He's a bit of an over the top striker who likes to use his pace so it's good away from home on the counter attack but as I said Lyndon or, or Charlie if you're, if you're playing one up top it's probably Lyndon because he can get in behind a bit he's got a bit more pace than Charlie mm-hmm. but as I said the main thing I think is to get more deliveries in the box yeah, he comes on to quite an, you know, quite an interesting debate, for, especially from my side. Yourself as a manager, what do you view as more important? I understand you may see a balance as important, but in terms of strikers, I see them as, as people that you know, are so, so based upon a, you know, a good run of confidence and a good run of a good string of games. What is more important? Is it Mark Warburton having a wide artillery in terms of, like you mentioned, you've got Dykes, who's an all-rounded striker. You've got Austin, who's a finisher. Maybe Gray is a man that can get in behind. Is it is it better having a wide asset and a wide set of skills that you can um, you know you can set up perfectly to to best utilize and best infiltrate a defence with a certain skill set, or is it more important more important having a striker consistently playing you know in in the same system and um, sort of growing confidence and, and sort of match and match minutes? What do you sort of see as more important if if you were at the helm? <laughs> For me, it'd be, it'd be different. I would pick my forward that I think will best suit us winning the game. If you've got Charlie mm. and Lyndon, they're your, the main two. And it, it's it's the old one of if you play well, then you play the next game. God. Or if you give them a run of two or three games, you don't score, then it's up to the next one to come in. I think, but for more, Mark Warburton, I think it's more important that he gets his best centre forward that he wants to play for his system. Don't matter who it is, whether it's Andre, yes. whether it's Charlie, yeah. whether it's Lyndon, he needs to lock down his his main centre forward, and that's how we're going to play from now to the end of the season. Do you think maybe that's, I think, that's I, been the problem that he's not done that? I, well, maybe, maybe it's been injuries, maybe it's been mm. a, a such and vast number of games in the last couple of months. He's had to try and juggle it around and refresh it. He sort of changed it round with playing two centre forwards then playing two with two number 10s so he's, he's mixed and matched it but I think from now you, from now to end the season what I would think and you probably speak to the centre forwards that know more than me like you speak to Kev or Furs they'll tell you that if, if you've got a run in the team and you know what system you're playing it does, does help them help them a bit more with their confidence but I think if we did or if Mark knows in his head his best centre forward, then you then you got to lean that way from that in the, the season. 
Haunted. Completely agree. Uh, let's just move now on to, to Blackburn on Saturday. A massive game. Um, with two, Don't worry, I'm two... not going there. Don't Good, worry, right. I was, just gonna, I was just going to ask you about that. You beat me no, to it. Absolutely no, perfect. Three not... points in the bag. Lovely stuff. Yeah, exactly. I was going to ask you for, for a prediction, but I don't need, don't need to now. Now you're not going. Yeah, I'm not going. We'll probably <laughs> win 5-0. <five mil. laughs> <laughs> oh my god right in all seriousness what has your thoughts going into into Blackburn on Saturday like I mentioned two teams Blackburn hot on our tail um, and three points between the two sides is going to be massive you know either Blackburn will gain three points on us or we will push you know Blackburn three points below us what are your thoughts going into that one I what think you for think? us it's, it's important not to lose for us if we if we get a draw up at Blackburn it's still a decent result uh yeah, as I said, it's, it's for us, we've got to look at the points total that we need at the end of the season and not not really game by game. Look at QPR fans. We was getting annoyed because we ain't won in like five games, but we were still fourth in the league. It's it's bittersweet. Like, yeah, you are frustrated because the team's not playing well, but in the big scheme of things, we had to beat your hands off for that at the start of the year. I did say not to get carried away at the start of the year, but again, I think, we're like a jilted bride, QPR fans. <laughs> we, we just expect it to go bad. So when it does go bad, for like four or five games, we start having a panic up. So it's, look, carry on. I expect us to get in the playoffs. Okay. So hopefully we can get there. And especially with the way the championship is, like you can lose two or three games and still be in the same position you are because everyone beats everyone. We, if we hit some consistency and some form back, now, which I expect us to, I do expect to get us to get in the playoffs. Nice, nice. So, what's your prediction for Saturday then? What's your prediction? Can I have a prediction out there? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say one all. I one do. All. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay. that's just bad luck. And if I say that, then we're probably <laughs> winning for nil. Like I say, I, I take that. I think, as you mentioned, it's so important not to lose because Blackburn gaining three points on us compared to just. Both teams settling for a point. I would take it. It's, um, but especially without Diaz, so influential for Blackburn. I think someone that causes all... You still with us? A few moments later. Yeah. All right. So I've got some questions here for Mark. A couple of quick fire questions. Let's see. You know, I don't really see yourself as the bloke that sort of sit on the fence. Hopefully we can have some, uh, some dividing answers. Here, <laughs> exactly. <so. laughs> right, let's go. Um, would you prefer this season? Home kit or away kit? Home kit. Home kit. Dieng or Marshall? Always home. I thought, I thought Marshall was a bit... It was hard for him to get dropped because he was, he was mm. playing really well. So you've got to go Dieng because he's probably got more money in the transfer market if you're going to be cynical like that. All right, we'll take it. Uh, um, where, so where do you think we'll finish this season? You said playoffs, but whereabouts? I'm not fast as long as we're in that playoffs. We're, we're, I'll, go, I'll go from fourth. Fourth, okay. Chair or Willock? Chair. Chair. What's been the it's best not, game? You... <laughs> <laughs> What's been the best game this season? Have you been to or, or you've watched? Uh, yeah, been a bit harsh that. Uh, do you know what? Middlesbrough was a very good game. But it was a draw. It was a very yeah. good game. But yeah. I would say watched would have been Reading I weren't there live but I watched it so yeah. it would be Reading at home okay would you stick to five at the back Warburton's current system or would you switch to a four if you were at the helm uh probably a five at the back I would stick to it because they're used to it whether we'd start at the start of the season and it gives you the options of maybe playing two strikers okay. I just think uh I wouldn't play in such a high line because we've not got the most athletic defenders. But yeah, I'll stick to five of them. <laughs> Johansson or Hendrick? Oh, you've got, to, you've got to say Johansson because he's captain. And not seen too much of Hendrick in a, in a cute guy shirt. But I would say he's the one player I've probably been a bit disappointed with this season. I thought he was excellent last year and he's just mm. not He's not reached the level of the player that we thought he'd be this year. So I'm hoping that he's got a big end to the season for us. Yeah, granted. Um, for this side, two up top or a solo striker? You kind of mentioned it, but... Yeah, I would flip and flop. I'd mix and match between that. But uh, I like a, a 
do like two up top. Do but up top. you've got... We fire the buck as well, yeah? But, but, you, but your two best players are Willock and Chair, so you'd have to go to number they 10. You'd go two strikers, two right tens, up. and five at the back and just... I, I, would go, I would go one strike <laughs> with two tens. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, who would win in a fight, Dickie or Dykes? I don't know on that one. I'd probably give it... They'd knock each other out of an head up because they look like they've got two big arms. What, Saunderson-esque or...? Yeah, I think it'd be just a, like you see two rams going at each other or deers. They might have to be a head off. I'll, I'll go Jimmy Dunn would knock them both out, really. <laughs> He'd take them both? <laughs> yeah, I think he would. Like the Irish Street Fighter or something. Yeah, I'd go for Dunn. All right, nice one. So that wraps it up. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, and just going through these last couple of games. Of course, you're not there. You're not there on Saturday for Blackburn, so I'm sure we'll register three points. No, I'm. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'll keep away for a little bit just to see if they like that. I, I gave them one game to win, and they they didn't. So I thought I'll get back, and then me walking out the ground, and then we scoring that has cemented it for me. I might not come down from Mount Snowden when I'm climbing there Tuesday. So <laughs> yeah, best of luck with that as well. Great cause. I'm going to have yes, to leave the, the link to donate in the uh, comment section as well. Uh, but no, thanks again for joining me, Mark. All the best. Stay away from QPR and enjoy the rest of the season. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, thanks mate. Catch you soon.